Greetings, esteemed viewers. Welcome to today's episode of Our Noble Lineage. While the ideals that have become known as Eastern thought have only become popular in Western culture within the past two centuries, many individuals, once introduced to this inner view of perceiving the divine, almost immediately embrace it. One example is Stephen Knapp, whose own experience and insight has inspired many to search within themselves for deeper answers. Where do we fit into this world? What's the purpose of this life? What are we supposed to do? Recently, Supreme Master Television was granted an interview with this shining example of the integration between East and West. Please join us for part one of our feature, Simplifying the Complex, author Stephen Knapp explains the sacred Hindu texts. Author and philosopher Stephen Knapp has dedicated his life working to ensure that the spiritual texts of the East are understandable to Western students. Through studying and practicing Vedic teachings for over 40 years, he has written many books in an effort to promote and preserve this vast spiritual knowledge. He continues to travel and lecture in India, having received an award for significant contributions to spirituality and Hinduism at the 17th Telugu Association of North America Conference in 2009. I'd always been curious about things, but that was when I was about 19 years old. I just thought, okay, I gotta find out what is this life all about? What are we supposed to do here? Where are we going? And so then I really started getting serious about studying the different religions and philosophies of the world. And I studied everything I could get my hands on, you know, from you know, Egyptology, Judaism, uh, I Ching, Tarot, you name it, uh, numerology, palmistry, everything, which really created a good background for me because then after a while it was like putting all the pieces of the puzzle together and I could start to see how everything fit together. Everything was connected. But then finally a friend of mine, he told me, well, I just got back from Toronto and I met, uh, you know, the devotees up there, the Hare Krishna devotees, and this is where you can send for their books and you can get this uh, thing called the Bhagavad Gita, uh, which is like the uh, Indian Bible. And I'm going like, okay, that's what I want to know. I want to know as much as I can on the different ideas of God, you know, who and what the soul is, all these different things. So when I got the Bhagavad Gita, uh, it was like the last piece of that puzzle that I was putting together. Then I could see how everything was fitting together. Everything was part of the absolute truth, but you had to get through, like I was saying, all the externals to finally reach that basis, that ultimate truth from which everything else springs. So once I read the Bhagavad Gita, I could find out more about who and what I am, what I'm doing here, where I'm going, because that was the first time I was really exposed to the deeper aspects of karma, reincarnation, that basically I couldn't find anywhere else. The Hare Krishna Movement, otherwise known as the International Society of Krishna Consciousness, was established in the United States in 1965. This vegetarian group was founded by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, as a way to guide seekers to divine awareness. Devotees recite the mantra, Hare Krishna, read the Bhagavad Gita and other ancient scriptures such as the Vedas, and practice Bhakti Yoga all with the goal of achieving oneness with Krishna consciousness. Being vegetarian honors one of the Hare Krishna movement's core ideals, that of ahimsa, or nonviolence. Exponentially increasing in size since its inception, you can find this loving group in many large cities around the world today, as devotees continue to inspire thousands of truth searchers. Stephen Knapp was one of the fortunate Hare Krishna devotees who was initiated by and studied personally with his Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. After about three years of study of all the different uh, literature I could get on the, the Vedic and Eastern text, while at the same time still continuing my uh, comparative uh, research in the other religions, I fully embraced, uh, you know, Vedic culture, and then I joined the Hare Krishnas and studied in the ashram for a while, and uh, after a year took initiation from Swami Bhaktivedanta, and uh, later, of course, got Brahman initiation, and uh, learned temple etiquette, the rituals, all those things. 
And then gradually I reached a point where I was thinking, you know, there's probably a lot of other Westerners that would like to understand this information. So then I started getting the idea of writing my own books. Deeply devoted to helping seekers better understand the Vedas, India's most ancient treasure, and other Hindu texts, Mr. Knapp has authored over 30 books and e-books over the years. In 2009 alone, he was invited to give 90 lectures at 76 universities and has spoken to gatherings as large as 25,000 people. While Oriental concepts and teachers are well known to the Occidental world, these texts remain a mystery to many. When we return, we will join Stephen Knapp as he sheds light on some of the oldest known religious scriptures on earth. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our noble lineage here on Supreme Master Television. Today we are following author and philosopher Stephen Knapp on his journey within as a member of the Hare Krishnas, which inspired him to bring more understanding to others of the Vedic and other Hindu texts of ancient India. The Vedas are known as the language of the gods, or divine concepts written in terms humanity can comprehend. Dr. Stephen Harefield, a distinguished American monk, Zen priest and author, explains. The Vedic texts are the oldest known philosophical texts about life. And the Brahmins, the Jains, and even the Buddhist sutras to an extent, and even uh, um, the Krishna philosophies to an extent, all originate out of that one. Even the biblical texts actually originate in some fashion or another out of that text. Among the world's oldest written texts are the Vedas that consist of four main sections called Samhitas. The Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Samveda and the Atharveda. The Rig Veda is the oldest section and was compiled around 1500 BC. The Vedas are said to have been received through divine communication and deal with all aspects of life, both physical and spiritual. Stephen Knapp has devoted a large portion of his life to the study and practice of these blessed scriptures. The word Veda means knowledge and Vedanta means the end of all knowledge. You know, if you follow knowledge to its ultimate end, you reach what would be called the absolute truth. So Veda means knowledge or spiritual knowledge, which is the basis of the primary Vedic Samhitas, which is the uh, Rig Veda, Samaveda, Atharva Veda, and Yajur Veda. But then beyond that, those essential spiritual truths which were found in those books were then elaborated like into the Upanishads, the Vedanta Sutras, then on into the Puranas with books like the Ramayan and the Mahabharata of which the Bhagavad Gita is a chapter of it. So it took those basic truths and expanded them and made it much more easy for the rest of humanity basically to understand and grasp. So I've read, you know, all kinds of books on different philosophies and stuff, but I have yet to find the elaborations as clear and as deep as what you can find in that Vedic literature. It gives you the methodology, which is practically the most important thing, where you can purify your consciousness and actually begin to see through the eyes of spiritual perception. One of the main methods stated in the Vedas and other divine Hindu texts for purifying one's consciousness is to refrain from harming sentient beings and to abstain from meat eating. It is written, for example, he who desires to attain supreme peace should on no account eat the flesh of any animal in the world. Mahabharata Anusasanika Parva Meat can never be obtained without injury to living creatures, and injury to sentient beings is detrimental to the attainment of heavenly bliss. Let him therefore shun the use of meat. Having well considered the disgusting origin of flesh, and the cruelty of fettering and slaying corporeal beings, let him entirely abstain from eating flesh. Manu Samhita He who permits the slaughter of an animal, he who cuts it up, 
he who kills it, he who buys or sells meat, he who cooks it, he who serves it up, and he who eats it, must all be considered as the slayers of the animal. There is no greater sinner than that man who seeks to increase the bulk of his own flesh by the flesh of other beings. Manu Samhita Vegetarianism helps you raise your consciousness. In other words, if you eat refined foods, vegetarian foods, you know, vegetables, grains, rice, dolls, things like that, it helps your consciousness become more and more refined rather than having to go through the process of digesting and eating meat, which has been basically saturated with the fear and pain that the other living entities go through when they're killed or when they know they're going to get slaughtered and all this. It actually reduces the consciousness. It reduces your spiritual perception, quite honestly. I've, I can say that from personal experience. And after actually being vegetarian is what helped me become more and more spiritual, not simply in sadhana or practice alone, but in the actual perception of what is spiritual and what is not. The more spiritual you become, the more you can actually see that which is spiritual. And that experience, that direct perception, is what separates, you might say, the students from the masters. As teachers and seekers both agree, intellectual understanding is only half of the quest in the search for the God within. The practice of compassion and understanding towards all, and the imparting of all this understanding to others must also be addressed. This concludes part one of our two-part interview with author and philosopher Stephen Knapp. Please join us next week when Stephen discusses how he integrated vegetarianism into his own life and the origins of Hinduism. Please visit www.stephennapp.com to find out more about Mr. Stephen Knapp and his books. Thank you for joining us today on Our Noble Lineage. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Between Master and Disciples. May your life be blessed with inspiration and divine understanding. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash NL.